Alright, so today we will be going over the steps for a basic microdermabrasion using the diamond tip. And we have our lovely model ready to go. And she has been prepped. She has no contraindications. And her skin is beautiful already. We're just doing a quick uh, pick me up. So that's what we will be doing today. Just a quick and easy uh, diamond tip microdermabrasion. Okay, so we're here and we're ready to start our basic microdermabrasion using a diamond tip. And once again, we have our model here. Um, her skin is nice and prepped. She has no abrasions, no breakouts, no blisters, no open lesions. She doesn't have any contraindications. So she is a perfect candidate for a microdermabrasion. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to start her first cleanse and we're going to get her started. So first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put on my gloves. I've already washed my hands. We're going to go ahead and make sure that her hair is out of the way. Is that comfortable for you? Yes. Okay. All right. So I have a very gentle cleanser, and I'm going to use my Clarisonic cleanser to do her um, first cleansing. And uh, this has the sensitive brush head, so it's not too aggressive for her skin. It's very, very gentle. Okay. And the cleanser that I'm using is the Foam Cleanser by the Zio Skin Health Line, if you guys can see that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a little pea squirt onto the brush. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and get started. Oops, excuse me. Dripping on you. Or you're using a Clarisonic or a rotary cleanser brush. You don't have to push down on the skin. The machine does all the work for you. So you kind of just work it along. You doing okay? Mm -hmm. Alright, and tuck your lips in for me. And this just has a very soft lather. Nothing that's going to be too, too aggressive on her skin. We don't want to aggravate it too much right before a microdermabrasion. Okay, so now we're just going to pop off the top and make sure that you clean this with warm soap and water and put it in your barbicide for 10 minutes. After your um, tip has been in the barbicide for 10 minutes, go ahead and take it out, rinse it out with um, just cool water, and then let it air dry. So now we're going to go ahead and remove her cleanser. You can use sponges, you can use a, a towel if you would like. I'm just using 4 by 4s Whatever works for you.
it doesn't matter if you wipe up on the face or if you wipe down on the face. Just as long as you're not applying too much pressure. Alright, I'm just going to wipe her down one more time. Just to make sure that I got everything off the face. Okay, so it feels like I've gotten pretty much all of the cleanser off of her skin. Now, so what you're going to do after that, you're going to tone her skin. And I will be using my TE pads by the Zio Skin Health line. And they come in little pads that look like this. So we're just going to go ahead and tone her skin. That may be a little tingly. This is a great way to help degrease the skin before we start our microdermabrasion. Okay, so now that we've done that, we are going to go ahead and start our microdermabrasion. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to figure out which tip that we're going to use. Okay, and usually all of your tips come in a nice fancy box like this. And you have an assortment of tips that you can choose from tips that you can use for the back, for the nose, for the face, for the decollete, um, and they have uh, different types of grits that you can choose. So today I'm just going to do a 200 grit. So what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and attach your tip to your wand and just screw it on like that. Okay. And it should look just like that. And my bacodermabrasion already has the filter inside of it, so I'll be removing that after her service. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my machine and I'm going to test the suction, make sure it's not too high. Okay. And usually I like to start it off on the lowest setting and then I make sure that it's not too abrasive for her. And then after that, I can either stay at the um, manufacturer settings or I can take it up a little bit higher. If her skin is a little bit more oily prone or she has thicker skin. Okay. Is that too abrasive? No. Okay. So whenever you're doing a microdermabrasion, you want to work between your fingers. You want to make sure that you hold the skin nice and taut. Okay. So I'll do it this way so you guys can see. You always want to work between your fingers. I'm not pressing down on her skin. I'm just allowing the machine to do all the work. Okay? After you've gone horizontal in one section, you're going to move to the next section of the forehead. Hold the skin taut. 
into the next section, hold the skin taut. Is that too abrasive for you? No. Okay. After you've done that, you can turn the face to the side and make sure you work between your fingers. I usually like to work around the perimeter of the face and I usually leave the nose and the cheeks for last. Um, everybody doesn't have to do it that way. It's just easier for me to remember where I've gone and where I need to go. So always remember to work between your fingers. And if you were to do the neck, you would have them hold their chin up, okay? and then you would basically work between your fingers the same way, like that. And my direction is usually towards the ear when it comes to the neck. Just make sure that you work between your fingers. So now we're gonna turn it to the side and now we're gonna do the left side of the, of the face. You wanna always make sure that the cord isn't touching your client's face a lot of people don't spend a lot of time um, sanitizing their cords, so you always want to make sure that you keep it off the face. Even when you go to stay board, they want to uh, look for this step right here, making sure that you keep your client safe. So once again, holding the skin taut and working around the face. Sometimes you can go up on the chin, like that. Okay, so now that I've done the whole perimeter of the face, now I'm going to do the upper lip, the cheeks, and the nose. So I'm just gonna hold the skin taut, and I'm gonna work on that lip. And hold the skin taut, and we're gonna work on the other side of the lip. Okay, so now we're going to work on the cheeks, and what I like to do is I like to hold the skin taut, and then I make a little U shape like that underneath the eye. You always want to make sure that you hold the skin taut underneath the eye, and sometimes the skin around the eye is so super thin you can actually go back down to your machine and turn down the settings. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I've turned down the settings and so now it's really gentle around the eyes because we don't want to stretch it or break capillaries and make it seem like she's starting to age faster than what she really wants to. Okay, so you always want to be very careful around the eyes. And once again, I'm not pressing down with the wand, I'm just gliding it across the face. other eye. Work between your fingers. Make sure you watch that cord too. Okay, we're going to come back and now we're going to do the nose. The nose is pretty easy. Make sure you get between the brows. I know we all have those 11s. I know I have 11s. So you wanna make sure that you give those 11s some love. Get the other side of the nose. Okay. And so that completes our first pass of our marker dermabrasion. abrasion. So now what we're going to do since we did all horizontal passes, now we're gonna go back and do either vertical passes or um, you can do, um, what's the opposite of, of diagonal? Oh, no, I said diagonal. Mm -hmm. Horizontal, vertical, vertical lines. Now we can do either diagonal lines or you can do vertical lines. So I'm gonna turn my settings back up just a little bit 
So now we're going to go back and we're going to do vertical lines. And it looks like that. So you're starting at the top of the brow, you're just going to come straight back to the hairline. And this, comes, this is considered your second pass. Not all of your clients are candidates for two passes. Usually you're going to do two passes on people that have a really thick skin and you know that they can tolerate it. If it's your first time, if it's a first time client and you're really not sure, just try doing one pass and see how her skin is. Check for erythema. Make sure she's doing okay. If she has a lot of erythema, don't push it. Okay? So we're just going around and we're doing all vertical lines, vertical strokes. Because the first pass was horizontal. And it's kind of like cross hatching. You want to make sure that you get all areas of the face. Okay, so we're going to turn. Now we're doing vertical strokes. And whenever you're performing a microdermabrasion, it should never hurt. It should never be painful. Also, one thing I would like to add, if you have a client that has a little bit of discoloration on their uh, decollete, I don't know if I can bring this down some. If you have a client that has discoloration on their decollete, you can also start at the chest bone and you can go out towards the shoulders like this. I don't know if you guys can see, like that. Okay, but just make sure you work between your fingers. Okay. You still doing all right? Yes. Okay, so now I'm going to go back and do the second pass on the upper lip, nose, and chin. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn down the suction so it's not so strong. And underneath the eyes, I still do my U shape. That really doesn't change. Usually you want to change your directions around the perimeter of the face. Underneath the eyes, it's usually a U shape. So we don't cause too much stress underneath the eyes. Remember not to push down on the skin, just let the machine do its work. Okay, so that completes your two passes of a microdermabrasion using the diamond tip. So now what we're going to do, we're going to turn our machine off. And at this time, if you want to tone her skin, you can tone her skin. I would use a toner that's very hydrating, nothing that's too astringent because that might burn her. If you wanted to do a, a layered microdermabrasion with a chemical peel, you could layer it with um, like a light lactic peel. That would be ideal. Or you can do like an enzymatic peel on top of this. But you want to make sure that they are a perfect candidate for that type of service. If they have very thin, fragile skin, I wouldn't layer a microdermabrasion with a peel. That would be too aggressive for your client. 
Okay, so now at this point, if you wanted to go ahead and do extractions, you can. I've been to some schools where they um, speak against doing extractions after microdermabrasions, and I've worked at some schools where they encourage you to do extractions after a microdermabrasion. So it's totally up to you. Um, there's no right or wrong answer. Um, my biggest thing is if their skin seems really irritated, I would just um, leave out the extractions. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put some hydration back into her skin. So we're going to go ahead and apply her mask. Okay, and so now I'm going to use a charcoal cream mask. Okay. And you only need a quarter size. So that's all that I'm using for her whole face. And it doesn't matter which type of brush that you're using. This is the one that I'm using, a foundation brush. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and apply that to her skin. Doing okay? Yes. You can also apply her mask down to the neck and decollete if you have enough product left. So that little container, that little section of my painter's palette was more than enough to cover her face and her decollete. So that was more than enough. So whenever you decide to do an, an aggressive treatment on your client, you always want to make sure that you rebalance it with some type of hydrating treatment afterwards. So that's why I chose to do this hydrating um, mask after her microdermabrasion. You don't want to have your client leave with irritated skin, okay? So this is going to sit for five to seven minutes. And I usually like to do an arm massage while that's sitting, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and come back after about five minutes. Okay, so now we're back. We're gonna go ahead and remove her mask. You wanna make sure that you use either a towel or a sponge or some four by fours. I chose to use four by fours, but whatever you decide is good. Just make sure if you do use a towel, make sure it is not hot. It's pretty much room temperature, close to cold, because you did just remove a layer of dead skin. And if you apply a hot towel to the face, it's not gonna be fun for her. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and remove the rest of her mask. And you can already tell a difference in her skin. She's glowing at this point. Okay. All right. So at this point, if you wanted to tone her skin, you could do that. So we're going to go ahead and tone her skin. And you can use a really hydrating toner. I wouldn't use anything too astringent. 
At this point, we want to rehydrate the skin. We want to start the healing process after a microdermabrasion. Okay. So now that we have finished um, toning her skin, we're going to start applying all of her um, post-treatment products. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start with her serum. Usually your serums go first because the molecular size is a lot smaller than a regular moisturizer. So um, what I'm going to use is the Growth Factor Serum by the Zio Skin Health line. I don't know if you guys can see that. Okay. So I'm just going to do one pump. And that's all that you need. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and apply that to her face. The next thing that we're going to do is um, we're going to apply her treatment creams. So um, she complained about some areas of hyperpigmentation. So I'm going to use the Brighten Neck Skin Brightener by the Zio Skin Health Line. It doesn't want to focus. And I'm also going to use the Retamax, which is a little bit of vitamin A by the Zio Skin Health Line. Whenever I have a client that is trying to treat hyperpigmentation, I usually like to put them on some type of a lightener and retin-A together, and that usually helps to treat the problem externally and internally. So the vitamin A is going to help um, exfoliate the skin and it helps to regenerate the collagen and the Brightamax um, this has some kojic acid and some some licorice root what else is in here some bear berry all of these are really great for um, lightening the skin a more um, a more gentle in a more gentle way So all you need is one squirt. Okay. That's just one squirt. And then I'm going to do one squirt of the vitamin A. Okay. So we have our products ready to go. We're going to go ahead and apply that to the skin. So what this is going to do is she is going to start seeing results in about two weeks. The discoloration is going to start to fade. Um, the Retin-A is going to help with the discoloration. It's going to help exfoliate the skin. It's going to help increase the cell turnover rate. So whatever um, discoloration she's experiencing is going to uh, start to fade after a couple weeks. Okay. And lastly, I am going to apply the Daily Power Defense. This is an anti-aging formula. And this is also by the Zio Health Line, Skin Health Line. So just one pump. One pump. And that's all you need. Okay. And this product is going to help protect her from all of the um, all the pollution, all of the antigens out there in the world. It's just going to seal everything in. 
So the reason why I'm not applying sunblock right now is because it's nighttime and she's basically about to go to sleep. Um, if this was a lunchtime service and she had to go back to work, I would apply some sunblock to her skin. Okay, so that's basically everything. Um, from beginning to end, after your client leaves you, you want to instruct her not to go out into the sun for 48 hours, um, no exercising, no sweating for 48 hours. Make sure that she doesn't exfoliate her skin for the next three days. Um, you want to use a really gentle cleanser for the next week. Always make sure that you wear your sunblock every day, even if you are just driving to work and going home you also get sun exposure through the windows. So um, just make sure she ke keeps it simple, just cleanse, moisturize, and sunblock, and then three days after her microdepravation, she can start her exfoliation. So um, thank you for watching, tune in next time.